hey everyone welcome back to my another tutorial and in this video we are going to learn KMM so if you don't know what is KMM so Kotlin multi-platform so Kotlin multi-platform is again a new thing probably you would say where you can use it for cross-platform project development and uh, it can be used to, uh, on like for different operating systems like you can use it for building for iOS Android Mac OS Windows Linux watch OS etc and one of the differences between Kotlin multi-platform and uh, other cross-platform frameworks like Flutter is that um, if you want, you can share code between multiple platforms, right? Like Android and iOS. And that also you can use the power of native code. Basically, you can write your UI. Uh, let's say if you target iOS, then you can write it in Swift UI. And for Android, you can write it in Jetpack Compose. And uh, you can write all the business logic in Kotlin, basically. So those are some of the things you can do. And if you want uh, like a single declarative framework to use, then you can also use Compose Multi-Platform in that case. And uh, yeah, that's that's what Kotlin Multi-Platform is. It's still in beta, but let's see how we can get started. So first of all, I'll go with my item. And you have to, uh, the first requirement is you have to have Java inside. Uh, your machine so like installed so how I'm gonna use it like I'm using Mac OS right now so I'll just say Java dash dash version to see that if I have in installed or not so I as you can see I have it installed Java 20.0.1 as of today and uh, that's good second thing is what you need is K doctor so similar to Flutter uh, Kotlin has its K doctor for multi-platform and right now it only works for Mac OS but I'm sure in future you will also find it for Windows and all so how you will do it you will install it using homebrew so brew install and you can just say K doctor so once you do that it will install the latest version right now I already have K doctor 1.0.0 installed so once you have that, then what you have to do, you have to check whether your system is ready for Kotlin multi-platform or not. So you will just run KDoctor. So once I do that, you can see it will diagnose all the things and you will see if the operating system is correct. Yes, Java installed. Yes, Android Studio is installed. Yes, Xcode is installed. Yes, Cocoa Pods is installed as well. And it will give me a conclusion that your system is ready for Kotlin multi-platform, which is what I want. If you face any issue or problems, you can go to their uh, website and you can find the solutions probably. Okay, now you have to use Android Studio Flamingo for this. And I would suggest to use the latest one. And right now what I'm using is Flamingo 2022.2.1 patch 2. Then you will go to plugins and you have to install another plugin, which is called multi-platform Kotlin multi-platform mobile. Right now it is by JetBrains. It has around 227.9K downloads. So yeah, this is the one. And uh, Compose multi-platform also has a plugin, by the way, uh, which we will talk later in the future. Now we will create a new project from here uh, and you can select Kotlin multi-platform app or library. So we'll go with app. And uh, here you can see we have to give some name. Let's say we give it KMM demo. And that should be fine. The minimum SDK is an API 24, which is Android 7.0 Nougat. And it covers almost 95% of the device. So that's fine. So Android application name, let's leave it like Android app, iOS app, shared module name is also fine. iOS framework distribution, you have two options. One is regular framework, one is Cocoa port. So I'll go with regular framework. It's totally up to you, whatever you want to use. And you will just say finish. So it will take some time and uh, it will get the job done. Okay, now I can. So I'll just select project from here. And now you can see we have KMM demo, which has a lot of folders. So let's take a look at the folders. We have Android app, we have iOS app. So Android app will take care of Android builds. Um, this iOS app folder will take care of iOS app builds. Uh, you, whatever you are using, if you're using regular framework, then it is it will use that, otherwise Cocoa Pods. Um, and the shared folder is what we are more interested in, right? Because shared folder is what, which will help us in, you know, getting the job done for all the use cases. So shared folder, if you open, you have source, you have the main build.gradle, which, which is most important for you. And then you again find Android main. So you'll write the Android specific code here, common, which is the common code for both of the platforms. You'll write in Kotlin and iOS main, which is very much specific to iOS. So if we open right now Android, so you will see it's written over here that what I want, there is Android platform class, 
which implements platform. It's an interface. And then you have a name which gives you Android and the latest uh, like build version. Okay, that's the gain. And you have a function called get platform, which gives you this. Okay. Now, similarly, if I open iOS, then I have another like file written in Kotlin, which gives me UI device dot current device system name and system version. Again, you have the same method name, which is get platform. And then we'll go to the common main, which will have a platform dot KT, which is this in platform, which we are using everywhere and it has the same get platform uh, method. We do it in Flutter as well, by the way. Um, and then we have greeting class greeting where we have a platform of platform type and it has a function called greet and we just call it hello and whatever the platform name. Now, if we go to build out Gradle once, then we can see the different things here like the JVM targets. We have list of iOS X64, iOS ARM64 and a simulator ARM64. And uh, for all of them, we are just making the framework as shared. And uh, we have common main, uh, common test and all these things as well. And the compiler SDK is 33 and minimum SDK is 24, all sorted. Now let's run it. Um, we can also select from here iOS app. And once you select from here iOS app, I think I'll also have to open the simulator. I think my simulator is already there. So, I mean, so now let's play it. Okay. We cannot see the option over here, but let's play it. It definitely will run somewhere. So, um, let's see again, it's using Gradle for building purpose. And uh, here I is my iOS iPhone 14 pro or something. And it can probably start a new simulator as well. Let's see how that works. And once you are done with that, I think you should be fine. Okay. Yeah. As I expected. So it started a new simulator for me and here it is. And uh, yeah, it has this iOS app and you can see hello iOS 16.4. That's what we have uh, been writing over here. So if we see here uh, in the common one, greeting hello and platform dot name so now you can change it you can do something so let's say i just use my name hello pawan kumar welcome to hello pawan kumar welcome to this okay platform dot name this is fine and i'll do a hot restart sort of thing um which will rerun my app this ios app and hello pawan kumar welcome to iOS 16.4 this is pretty cool <laughs> okay so um and i'm sure it will work on android as well i'm not running it right now if you want you can run it and i'm sure it will work because android is the least concern uh, it should work on ios that is the main concern i would say now um so how you will add dependencies to this right so um, there are various ways uh, first is you have to decide if you want to add multi-platform dependency so that there are a lot of um, you know like multi-platform libraries available as of today so if you see this um, like I'll, I, you can go to the documentation i have the documentation open right now and i can see there are a lot of multi-platform uh, dependencies which you can use for example you can use coin apollo okio and coroutines and all those kind of things as well and you can also install native dependencies so let's say i want to install a multi-platform dependency so how i'm gonna do that so if i want to do it for both of them right so i'll go to this part where we have common main right common main is what we are looking for and here we can add multi-platform dependencies so let's say we want to install a date time multi-platform dependency okay so what i'm gonna do i'll just put that dependency over here and this is the dependency okay and then uh, what you have to do is uh, let's just sync this and i'll just click sync now so once you have that dependency in place okay i think we are done no okay then what you will have to do you will have to go to the shared folder again you will go to source um you will go to common main and you can create a new file over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's say, create a new file, Kotlin file, and I'm going to call it, let's say, new year dot KT or KT is not required, I guess. So you see this, we have a class new year, uh, which I don't want, but let's do one thing. Let's remove this thing and let's uh, have a function. 
uh, let's say the function name is days until new year okay so new year and it will require a dependency so i'll just import over here kotlin on second x dot date time and dot star okay now uh, <laughs> this is probably wrong uh, this is not what i wanted so the copilot is not doing my favor but it's making my code even bad so clock dot system dot today at uh, we we can also use today in i guess that is the latest one and then we can specify the time zone um and then um new year or uh, how we will find this one we can use local date okay they have the local date and then we can have today dot year plus one and then one and one okay and then we have to return days until this new year okay this is what we have created so now what it will do we'll go to greeting dot kt and um, hello pawan kumar and that thing is fine what else i would want is basically that slash n uh there are days until new year okay this is fine okay so this is what we have now uh we have one okay so um let's run it now and let's see if this works on ios or not so we are just saying that welcome to this and days until new year and let's see if it works or if we have any issues it's running so you can see hello pawan kumar welcome to i16.4 days until new year is 200 so 200 more days to go which i didn't know by the way <laughs> so it's it's a good thing so yeah that's it that is how you can start with kotlin multi platform i will be making more videos on it because even i have to play a lot with this thing that how much it can do the justice with uh, as comparison to what flutter can do so um, yeah keep watching the tutorials if you liked it press the like button subscribe to the channel and also let me know what's your thoughts on kmm in the comment section see you in the next one bye bye